Yo, what's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. Just got done reading The Death of Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus, so stay tuned for a review. Alright, so this is kind of like the third video in this series. First, I did The Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus. Then I read the, re the rest of that volume in the oversized hardcovers. This Omnibus follows directly from Volume 12 with Ultimate Comics Spider-Man 15. Then they go ahead and renumber back to the original numbering and you get issues 150 through 160. And then there's two Ultimate Comics miniseries that are collected in this volume. You get Ultimate Comics Avengers vs. New Ultimates 1 through 6 and then Ultimate Comics Fallout 1 through 6. I really enjoyed reading this omnibus. It was really good. Uh, and I was a little bit worried because the end of the regular run and the oversized hardcovers kind of took a weird turn and went in a whole different direction. But this book was like really sad. It was really emotional. Obviously, spoiler alert, it's the death of Peter Parker in the Ultimate Comics universe. And it's pretty sad, man. I got to be honest with you guys. Now, we pick up, it's still Superhero House, it's still Bobby Drake as Iceman, Johnny Storm as Human Torch living with Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy and Aunt May and all that's going on. What happens here is that Carol Danvers, who is the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., she feels like Spider-Man's messing up one too many times. He stopped a diamond thief for $11,000 worth of diamonds, but cost $2 million in damage in the city. So it's like, come on, bro, you're trying to do the right thing, but you're causing more problems than you're solving, right? So she says that, you know, we need to train you. She puts it up to a vote with the Ultimates, which is Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America. Thor and Iron Man both feel like, yo, Spider-Man is ready. He should be on the Ultimates. He should be under S.H.I.E.L.D., whatever. But Cap is like, nah, he's still too young. Uh, and he, he, was, he wasn't with it at all. Funny enough, Spider-Man really dies in this book and in this universe saving Captain America. So that's kind of like something that Cap has to live with later on and we see during the funeral. The Ultimates, they, they try to stop by and train him one at a time. Iron Man tries to come by, Cap tries to come by, but it's always like bigger events are happening, bigger problems are happening, and they leave, and they never really actually do any training with him. Uh, and like I said, you know, Cap leaves for this big emergency. You have the Sinister Six broke out. At the same time, you're having a fight with uh, a Nick Fury Avengers team that he put together, which consists of Punisher and Hawkeye and and some others and um, Punisher is ready to take out Captain America's kneecaps with the sniper rifle uh, and Spider-Man jumps in his way gets shot kind of through his side and his stomach and he gets like a you know a pretty bad gunshot it's not really what kills him but it makes him super weak and in his final battle with Green Goblin uh, he dies and seemingly Green Goblin dies as well but you see Norman Osborn kind of smiling at the end because that's all he wanted was to kill Peter Parker. But it was kind of fitting how he battles Green Goblin at the end of this run. It's like the first big battle he had in the beginning. So it, it comes full circle. I feel bad for Aunt May, man. She loses Uncle Ben. Gwen Stacy dies. Gwen Stacy comes back. Then Peter. His funeral is like a super emotional scene. And uh, Captain America admits to Aunt May that he's kind of the reason why Peter is dead and she smacks him in front of everybody like in the face big huge ceremony we see how it affects his ex-girlfriend Kitty Pride, and she's now posing as this other superhero and she's taking her aggression out on criminals it, it affects Iceman it affects Human Torch of course Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane Mary Jane you know she's trying to be a reporter and she's trying to write this article how the world killed Spider-Man, right? They've always labeled him as a menace. They never had his back. And now that he's dead, everybody's coming up, how they knew him and he was so great and all this shit. Just like real life, you know, like a, a musician dies and everybody says they were their biggest fans, but they never bought an album when they were alive. Anyway, at the end of, at the end of the run here, Nick Fury admits to Mary Jane, like, he's, I loved that boy. I was like, what does that mean? I, I loved him. But uh, apparently uh, Nick Fury worked closely with... Uh, Peter Parker's parents in this universe uh, with um, Richard and Mary Parker and uh, he knew who Spider-Man was the whole time and always pictured him being like one of the greatest superheroes of all time and all this and that and and he ended up like dying kind of on his watch so you kind of get that crossed over during the Ultimate Comics Avengers vs. New Ultimates and that was a really cool run um, some of it I felt like 
this book suffered from some of the stories in the Ultimate Spider-Man oversized hardcovers, like events that happen in other books that aren't collected in this book, you know? So sometimes it's kind of like you just got to roll with it. But basically, um, Nick Fury is being kind of framed and pushed out of S.H.I.E.L.D. and uh, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s taken over by uh, Carol Danvers, who's not Captain Marvel. But he gets pushed out. The Ultimates are against him. So he puts together his, his, uh, his own Avengers, which consists... Of Blade, uh, Punisher, Hawkeye. I think that's about it. They show the original Hulk. It's uh, Bruce Banner's mentor, who is like this old, frail little guy, but he can control hulking out and keep his uh, his smarts and everything. And they end up taking his formula to all Hawk out and uh, to all Hulk out and fight the uh, the Ultimates later on. So that was a cool little mini series. The Ultimate Fallout miniseries, I know they just included this because it has a very small portion that introduces Miles Morales and even shows him running around in a Spider-Man costume. And everyone says, like, dude, that's really in bad taste. How are you going to wear Spider-Man's costume? Uh, and it doesn't go into his origin. It doesn't show him in his own costume. It just shows him, we, we know that he has spider powers somehow. But the other issues of Ultimate Fallout... It's the fallout of the death of Spider-Man, but a lot of it uh, is kind of unnecessary, I guess. But Anyway, let's flip through some of the artwork on here, which was really good, by the way. It wasn't like that animated manga style like it was at the end of uh, the oversized hardcover, uh, volume 12. And then uh, we'll wrap this up. All right, so the cover of Dust Jacket that shows Peter Parker with Uncle Ben. I remember being this in the single issues, but it wasn't collected in the omnibus. I think it was collected... And a Miles Morales issue, which they kind of uh, numbered like issue 200, if I remember. But that doesn't happen in this book. So that's the dust jacket. Talks about the creators here. So Bendis was still writing it. Mark Millar must have wrote the uh, crossovers. Here it shows the issues on the back. This had a $75 cover price. That's pretty inexpensive for an omnibus. Then we have the all-white leather hardcover with the red foil lettering. So here's the last issue where it's issue 15. You have them dealing with the aftermath of the Chameleon siblings which Chameleon was posing as Peter Parker, and, you know, he hooks up with Mary Jane and all this kind of stuff. So you got Gwen and, and Mary Jane kind of got a rocky relationship right now, but Gwen decides to actually leave. She knows Mary Jane loves Peter Parker. She decides to run away. She comes back. Well, this is her running away right here. She does come back, but um, she uh, she wants to let Mary Jane have him kind of a thing. Then, like I said, we go back to the original numbering uh, and goes with issue 150. This is him right here stopping this guy stealing, like I said, $1,000 worth of diamonds. Property damage, $2.7 million. So almost $3 million in property damage to stop this guy stealing eleven grand. So here goes, uh, like I mentioned, Carol Danvers putting it up to a vote with the ultimates on what should we do with this Peter Parker or Spider-Man because he's really becoming a pain in my ass. And this is where they're telling him we're going to be doing this after school superhero training. Which doesn't really go well. That's right. So Mysterio's, Mysterio is dark in this run, man. Mysterio, you know, he kills Kingpin at the end of the last volume and he, he runs up on Black Cat who digs up this... Um, Zodiac key that Kingpin was keeping tucked, which is like a really dangerous tool. So we get a little bit of that. That's kind of a cool storyline. So everyone starts freaking out because for the second or third time, Norman Osborn breaks out of wherever he's being held. I don't know if it's uh, Triskelion or something like that. And uh, he breaks out with him again, the Sinister Six or the Insidious Six, whatever they end up calling him. And that becomes a whole thing, obviously. Then you can see the art change up when we get into um, Ultimate Comics vs. Avengers. No, Ultimate Comics Avengers vs. New Ultimates. 
So I guess the whole point of this, it, it, it ends up going down that this battle is going down at the same time that the Green Goblin, Spider-Man battle, Sinister Six battles going down. And um, it just, that's the reason why no one was able to save Spider-Man because they were doing this at the at that time that was going down. So that was kind of interesting. I remember I mentioned in like one of the early volumes of the Ultimate Spider-Man hardcovers, I didn't like the crossover with the other Ultimate titles, but this one I really enjoyed. It was it was tight. The Spider-Man gets shot. It's cool the way that Nick Fury recruits. First of all, I love Nick Fury in this whole miniseries. He was dope. Nick, uh, how he recruits Punisher. He's like, yo, we're get, we're we're gonna give you the keys to every cell in this jail, and all the guards are gonna take a night off, and you do whatever you want, because we know you like to punish. He goes Hulk out, Punisher, Hawkeye. Dang, I forget who that was. Blade or is that Blade? Here's Norman being held captive, which doesn't last long. Here's like Cap trying to train Spider-Man, but then he gets called off for more serious business, tells Spider-Man not to follow him, but he sure enough does. This was kind of emotional too, like Aunt May and uh, Gwen Stacy driving away to get away. The neighbor calls her like, hey, I think your nephew is Spider-Man, which she knows, but... Now, she, the neighbor knows it, and they're like, I think they're killing him. So, bam, she swerves around to go back. He's getting beat down by the whole squad and Green Goblin. It's pretty crazy. It did remind me of the death of Superman a little bit, like how he dies here. So, he dies, right? He's, he throws a car on top of Green Goblin. He's dealing with this gunshot wound for this whole time. Then he picks up another truck. He slams it onto Green Goblin. It explodes, knocks him back. But even before it explodes, like this owl right here is kind of like his last. He he's hurt. He's done, man. Knocks him back, and boom, he's gone, man. He's kind of just happy that he got rid of Norman. He dies here, and then Norman. See, they show him. He's kind of frown his mouth straight and then it's kind of like a little grin here at the end so that's kind of how it ends with Norman Osborn as Green Goblin ultimate fallout he goes the Nick Fury Mary Jane stuff I mentioned here's the funeral with the slap that I mentioned so yeah I guess ultimate fallout it, it was important because of that but then you have like this Thor bringing Atlantis to, to Midgard story and this rogue X-Men story this Bruce Banner with a, a telekinetic person here. Here's Miles Morales in like a Halloween type Spider-Man costume trying to stop the kangaroo. So I guess you could say Miles Morales. That's their first time seeing Miles Morales actually right here. I like his face. I guess his first fight is against the kangaroo. Then you have Reed Richards, the maker, Mr. Fantastic. And I remember... Ultimate Fantastic Four is what gave us Marvel Zombies. So this feels like it's after that. But I don't remember exactly all what happened with that Reed Richards, the maker, or where he ends up going here. I don't know if that leads into Secret Wars in the 616. Is that when they cross over? I don't, I don't remember. Then you have this weird Quicksilver thing that kind of leads to nowhere for us because I don't know where we would continue to read that, you know? And that's pretty much it. All right, guys. So that's my thoughts on the death of Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus. Really happy to be getting through these issues. I'm reading the Ultimates Omnibus now by Mark Millar. I read one issue and so far I'm digging it. Then I'm going to jump into reading the Miles Morales Omnibus, which I've read those in single issues, but I'll just do a reread uh, re to kind of flesh out this Ultimate Universe. Let me know what you think about the death of Ultimate Spider-Man in the comments below. Hit that like on the way out and make sure you're subscribed to the channel for more daily content. Stay minty fresh. Peace.